Okay, I'll get some more light on the subject in a moment when we need it. Um, I'm making this video. Um, basically, something prompted me to do this because uh, I was discussing. I have a personal preference uh, for points over electronic ignitions. Um, I'm not trying to talk anyone else out of not using an electronic ignition. Like I say, it is a personal preference. I've uh, had bikes with points and I've had bikes with electronic ignitions. And for me, I prefer the points and where possible, I'll stick with them. If I built an engine up and didn't have the components, like the advanced retard unit and the points back plate and things like that, and probably had to buy them or find them, I may very well then buy an electronic ignition and fit it. But uh, I haven't had to yet. And I actually reverted to points from an electronic ignition on a BSA Thunderbolt that I bought, which was already fitted with the electronic ignition and had been problems. And finally it cut out and left me with a long, hard push up a steep hill on a baking hot day. And that did it for me. We got it trailered home and I fitted points to it and uh, it's never really been a problem since. But they're just my experiences. And obviously I've got a tri Trident with... Uh, three sets of points on it as well and uh, I don't have any issues with setting that up and uh, it doesn't go out of adjustment frequently or much if at all to be honest but anyway they're just some of my reasons for what I'm doing but um, I was sort of asked or challenged if you like about the awkwardness of setting the full advanced timing on uh, one of these you think they're 4CA and 6CA the old Lucas uh, contact breaker setups and obviously they've got an auto advance on them a mechanical one which is held back by springs and uh, moving the cam to full advance can be a bit of a fiddle there are means of locking them on full advance and even they're a bit of a fiddle but I don't do that um, what we got with the Tiger Cub is uh, you only get in the manuals usually the sort of static retarded ignition timing settings or piston positions so um, for instance you might get I don't know for example one of them might say I say one of them because of compression ratios and com camshaft combinations the ignition timings on these cubs can vary but I know there's one of them given as eight degrees before top dead center well that is the retarded ignition so you got the advance to go on top of that which is taken care of by the advanced retard unit or automatic timing unit and you can get wear in them because they are mechanical and perhaps they might advance a little bit further than they should when they get worn so what I do is I set a genuine full advance timing and I found with the Tiger Cubs if you want to speak in metric that um, seven millimeters before top dead center for full advance works pretty well and I've got this one set to that now and I'll just sort of show actually that I've got the uh, plunger in the spark plug hole there it is and we are currently set I've got it so that the piston is seven millimeters before top dead center so I want it sparking fully advanced in that position that it's in now and obviously the advanced retard unit is relaxed so it's in the retarded position I've got the sparking plug hopefully where it can be seen because what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to grab hold of the cam of the advanced retard unit with some pointy pliers and I'm going to turn it to the fully advanced position and we should see a spark I've got power to the uh, ignition on this one from a battery charger we've seen it running and I'm gonna put let's see I might not have to put the head torch down actually let's see this might take a little bit of a uh, couple of goes but ah there we are see we're just literally just getting a spark as I go full advance on that. Now, the spark, hopefully we can see that with the camera. 
The spark occurs just as I reach the limit of travel on the auto advance unit because obviously I'm working against, I'm turning it against the springs there and just as it comes to a stop at full advance we get our spark. So I know the ignition timing on this machine is right but if I had to adjust it all I'd have to do is slacken the pillar bolts off and move the back plate one way or the other just slightly then repeat the uh, process with the pointy pliers, rotate the cam. It's quite easy to get hold of. I mean, I'd find it easier to do if I wasn't holding a camera as well. Um, uh, sorry, not the camera, the torch. But uh, hopefully we've seen there that as the sort of heel of the cam, or the, the point of the cam comes round to the heel of the points, I should say, we get our full advance. And at that moment, crack, the spark plug sparks. So I know that the ignition timing is correct on this Tiger Cub. Um, the only thing where there could be any sort of doubt, if you like, although I've proved it on mine, they all seem happy with it. You want about 7 millimeters before top dead centre for full advance and that figure isn't given in any of the manuals I've worked that one out for myself but um, that seems to work well for them if anyone has got a different figure or a preferable figure and wants to stick with that one fair enough whatever your figure is that you've got for full advance um, if you're happy with it fine and that's how you go about checking the full advance timing just have your ignition on or power to your ignition system and rotate the cam round to full advance and as it comes to a stop at full advance that's when you want to see a spark and it's quite easy should you need to to adjust the back plate to compensate until you get the position you want on the timing and that's it done and there we are well I've waffled on we've checked the ignition timing on this Tiger Cub and found that it sparks at seven millimeters before top dead center on full advance no fuss, no swearing, no cursing, and um, of course this is one thing that you can't do with an electronic ignition. The only way that you can verify if an electronic ignition is going off at the right time is to have marks on your crankshaft alternator rotor probably, on a British bike anyway, um, suitably marked for full advance, and you have to run the engine and you have to point a strobe at your timing marks and see that the marks line up when you've revved the engine up and it's gone full advance. I've just set, or checked rather, I haven't set, it was set already, but I've already confirmed that the timing on this at full advance is correct and we haven't even had to start the engine. And uh, the longest part of doing that really was me probably talking about how I do it. And that's it. You just get something to grip that cam, the pointy pliers, which I used are fine. Twist it round to full advance after you've got your piston to where you want it to be, of course, and make sure that the spark happens just as it comes to a stop. Can't travel any further. If it doesn't, just compensate by moving the back plate one way or the other until you get it where you want it. And that's your timing set accurately and properly without starting the engine, without using a strobe, Try that with an electronic ignition. That's another reason why I like points. So, uh, that's it. The Tiger Cub is timed correctly. I'm happy with that. Thanks for watching.